What's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a review of the Testo 770-3 True RMS Clamp Meter. I received this meter a couple months back from Testo uh, to do a review on. So first thing I wanted to do before I did the review is open it up, toss it in the tool bag, and use it for a while. So that's what I've been doing for the past two months, maybe a little over. I've used this meter daily. It's been in my MB2 bag and I've gotten fairly comfortable with it, so comfortable enough to make a, a review um, based on the results that I've seen in the field. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to go over some of the features, some of the pros, cons, and just give you an overall rating of, of how, I, how I like the meter. First thing I noticed with this meter right off the bat, obviously, is the different style clamp design that it has, where it has the retractable bar that goes down into the meter. Super easy to hook on wires, especially back deep in electrical cabinets and things like that. Uh, really, really like this clamp style. Didn't know if it was going to make a difference one way or another, um, but after using it for a while, I much prefer this clamp style compared to the other more typical styles. Um, has this large lever over here, which has a very powerful spring inside of it. So once you get on that wire and you let go, you can hear it, it holds on very, very well. Um, has the rubberized dial, very positive dial. You can hear each click. So it's very hard to sort of get stuck in between. There's a couple meters that I've had that you can kind of not really know where your dial is, kind of get stuck in no man's land. Um, that's not a factor on this meter at all. But as far as the build goes, it, it's a very durable meter. I've dropped it a few times. It's got a couple scrapes and scratches on it and things. A um, couple scratches on the screen. But it's held up very, very well. Again, I've used it for about two months now. Um, but the overall design I like. No problems at all. Uh, let's see if you can, if we can get a focus on here. You can see it uses three AAA batteries. It's a cat, uh, excuse me, a cat four 600 volt meter. Uses Bluetooth, obviously, so you can trend data just like the smart probes or any of the other Bluetooth devices. I'll go ahead and turn it on. One of the best features of this meter, in my opinion, is the screen, the LED light. I just love Testo screens, um, whether it's the gauges or the multimeter. Um, they they really knock it out of the park with their screens, but you can see we're on amps. It does AC and DC amperage. Right now when you turn it on it defaults to an auto range. So you, you can see we're in DC mode right now. If you clamp the meter on something and it reads over 3 amps AC, it will automatically change to AC amperage. But if you know what you're checking, all you do is hit the select button if you need AC or hit the select button again if you need DC and you're good to go. Uh, we'll move up here where you got our voltage again AC and DC it will automatically default to auto range you can see it's flipping back and forth because it's not registering any voltage again same thing hit the select button select AC or DC you know what voltages you're checking so that's really a non-issue um, up here turn the light back on you have our ohm scale you hit the select button can see we're on our auto range ohms hit the select button again you have our little continuity we'll have a diode tester and lastly you have capacitors and this meter unlike many of my other ones um, reads nanofarads as well not something that I personally use very much um, but a feature that some guys might especially if you're working on circuit boards and things like that um, sort of on the same line as the diode tester does microamps as well and also it does wattage and power factor which I didn't know how much I would actually use this feature until I had a meter that had it um, using the 770-3 over the past couple months I found myself using the the wattage and power factor quite frequently on many maintenances um, but those are pretty much all the features of the meter you have a hold button on the side here, so if you get in there and you take your amp draw, you can just click hold and draw the meter back out and see what your meter is reading. Um, the Bluetooth, of course, um, which 
It's Bluetooth, I believe it's 4.0. Um, so the range on it is about the same as the Smart Probes, um, which I've done a video talking about the range on those. So you can take a look at that if you're interested in the range. But the good thing about the Bluetooth, you're not really walking away from this. You might want to clamp it in the unit and put the blower door on so you're getting an accurate reading of amps um, without the change in the airflow static pressure and things like that with the door removed and the biggest thing is you can trend data on it so you can have your phone or your tablet trend the information whether it's an intermittent issue whether you have a compressor that's drawing periodically it's drawing higher amps than normal any any kind of odd and end things that you need to trend data for um, just to kind of monitor a system but overall i really like the meter um, We'll take a look at the leads right here. The leads are over three feet long. They're very, very long leads. Um, I like the reinforced ends here. I've had a lot of leads, whether it be field piece or fluke, that just from bending back and forth will actually pull the wire out. So I do like this uh, sort of reinforced ends that they have on them. The one downfall about the leads is that the ends don't come off which, I mean, if you're in an electrical panel, you don't want a whole lot of exposed uh, meter leads just because you can short them out. Um, but it would be a nice feature if you could remove this to put alligator clips and things like that on there. Um, on the next meter that Testo comes out with, it's going to have slightly different leads to it. Um, but the, the leads are very nice. They're very heavy duty. That's the only downfall about them is you can't remove the... Uh, remove the end from them but other than that they're very nice leads they plug into the bottom of the multimeter you have a common terminal that you can see which is going to be your black lead they fit in there really really snugly it's very difficult to pull them out which is a good thing you don't want leads falling out of the meter or anything like that they're held in there very very nicely as you can see takes a little bit of effort to get them out of there which again definitely a good feature um, some people prefer the leads on the to plug in on the front really doesn't matter too much to me sometimes when you go to set the meter down it kind of props up like that I simply just turn them to the sides and you're good to go um, but as far as the cons of the meter one downfall of the meter is it doesn't come with a case that's not a deal breaker at all for me because I use an MB2 bag, which is a meter bag. Um, so this slides right in it. So I don't use the, I wouldn't use a pouch or anything, even if it came with one. But some guys like them. Um, also, you can toss your leads in there. You can toss your alligator clips, things like that in there. But uh, that's one downfall to the meter. Um, another one which I just touched on is the uh, the leads again. Great leads, but I'd like if the ends came off, um, just so you'd have a little bit more versatility with the leads. Um, the only other downfall, let me go back here. It's not really a, a terrible thing for the meter, but just something that I notice. If you're looking at the meter now on amps, it sits at between two and three tenths of an amp, whether you're on AC or DC, pretty much just sits there. So it doesn't zero out. Again, for what I do, I mean, I'm not really, I'm not really working on anything super, super small amperage. Um, the smallest is going to be like condenser fan motors running a couple, running a half an amp, something like that. But uh, it's just one of those things that it, it could read zero, um, but it doesn't. Those are really all the cons that I can think of as far as the pros go. The clamp style obviously is a no-brainer. It's a great design. Um, I wish all multimeters actually had that type of clamp. I much prefer it over the what the standard, uh, if you will, clamp style is. The display, of course, I really, really like the crisp, clear display, the super bright LED. You can even see this in the sun. It makes it a lot easier to, to look at the screen um, without too much glare on it. The other thing is the Bluetooth. Bluetooth is great for trending data, as I touched on before. The wattage and power factor, which is another great feature that many meters don't have. Um, 
and it's durable. Like I said, I've been using it for about two months. It's got a little scratched up here and there, um, but nothing major. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, overall, a very, very solid meter. I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's a mid-range meter. It's not super high end. It's not super low end. It's right there in the middle, um, which is kind of... Uh, what I look for in, in tools in general, I, I don't have super high end tools for most things. Um, and this tool just fits a good niche. It's right in the middle. Definitely a solid all around meter. Uh, highly recommend it for anybody in the residential HVAC industry like me down in the south. Um, I've loved it. I'm going to continue to use it. So hopefully that answers any questions you may have had on the meter. Definitely go check it out. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.